We know that a finite element numerical method is a very powerful tool for simulating a variety of challenging real-world mechanical problems. However, the success of finding a solution does not guarantee numerical accuracy. Let's look at this very simple cantilever beam problem. The solver can generate a solution with only one element across the thickness, like this. Or the problem can be solved with many elements, like this. Both of these cases are successfully solved. However, clearly the results, for example, the deformation, the stress, and the strain from these two sets of results are very different. We might intuitively recognize that for this case, the results with more elements should be more accurate. But how accurate is it? And is it accurate enough? Is there a rule to decide the level of accuracy for the solution? And how can we achieve accuracy in our problem solving? In this how-to video, we will try to answer these questions. Ready? Let's go. First of all, let's introduce the term adaptive convergence for finite element analysis. Adaptive convergence means that the system response, such as stress or deformation, converges to a repeatable solution with decreasing element size for a well-defined model. Hence, the result is no longer changing with further mesh refinement. When adaptive convergence is achieved, this means that the numerical accuracy of the solution is obtained within the limits that you prescribe. Since we are talking about accuracy, we should be aware of what reference results we are using for comparison with the obtained results. In fact, for most practical mechanical engineering problems, there isn't an exact solution or analytical solution because of the complexity of the materials, nonlinear contacts, and nonlinear deformation. Therefore, instead of an absolute accuracy, what we need to track in an analysis is relative accuracy, or to be more precise, the percent change of results between one mesh and a finer mesh. Adaptive convergence requires the problem to be solved multiple times with different levels of mesh discretization. Namely, it starts with a coarser mesh and moves to a more refined mesh. The relative error is defined in terms of comparison between results from models with different mesh density. Here, phi represents the result quantity. Subscript I denotes the refinement iteration. And capital E is the user-specified accuracy. So when the change in results is smaller than the user-specified tolerance, convergence is satisfied. Now speaking of the term convergence, some of you might find this quite familiar in another place where we are trying to solve a nonlinear system iteratively by a numerical method. For example, using newton raphson method to solve a nonlinear system, convergence means that the unbalanced force from the equilibrium is minimized to a defined criterion. We should not mix up the meaning of convergence in these two different scenarios. Coming back to adaptive convergence, we mentioned that it requires solving the problem multiple times with ever-increasing refinement of the mesh. In the past, engineers would have needed to determine manually where to refine meshes to obtain good numerical accuracy, which can be an error-prone process. With the help of ANSYS, this procedure can now be done automatically for finite element analysis. Now let's have a look at a simple example using the Adaptive Convergence tool. By way of a brief introduction, the model geometry is quite straightforward. We use aluminum as the material for this structure. No settings are defined for the mesh for now. We will just use the automatically created mesh to obtain initial results. For boundary conditions and loading, this side of the surface is fixed. A pressure is applied on the inner surface of the round hole, and a force is added to the upper half of the outside round surface in a negative y direction. 
For this problem, we expect large deformation, so under the analysis setting, we turn on large deflection formulation. To determine if large deflection formulation is needed, you can also first run the problem without large deflection turned on and check if the deformation is noticeable compared to the dimension of the geometry. If so, large deflection formulation is required. And of course, for large deformation problems, we can say that convergence study is more necessary and meaningful as the error could be drastic if the mesh is insufficient. Now we can click on the solve button and get our initial results. Let's insert a total deformation result and an equivalent stress result on the entire body. By inspection of these results, the mesh does not appear to be satisfactory. The problem does solve successfully, however, and the deformation pattern and stress distribution are as expected. This way we rule out any possible mistakes in setup of the model. To use adaptive convergence, let's right mouse click on the total deformation results. Select insert and then convergence. In the worksheet window of convergence, you will see the first data point representing the total deformation results. In the table below, you will find the detailed information of this data. Note this is the maximum value of the entire body. Going back to the contour plot, you can see this matches the maximum value on the color scale. This means we are going to track the maximum total deformation value of the body in the adaptive refinement procedure. Once this maximum deformation no longer changes within the allowable limits you specify as the mesh is continually refined, we will say convergence for this result is reached. We can also choose other results to track in the refinement procedure. For example, the maximum results of a scoped surface, or we can even track results at a specific node. We just need to insert the convergence tool under that specific result. Here, let's start with tracking the maximum total deformation value. We will need to define the allowable change for the convergence tool, which can be deemed as the user-specific accuracy, the capital E in this expression. Let's change this to 5%. This means only when the change in results for the previous mesh to the current refined mesh is less than 5% convergence is achieved. We can also control the aggressiveness of the adaptive refinement by adjusting the refinement depth setting under the adaptive mesh refinement, which is in the details view of the solution object. The default value is two for the structural analysis. So when adaptive convergence occurs, the program will refine to a depth of two elements. If the user wants a more aggressive refinement, this number can be increased. But because of the increased region for refinement, the solving time can start to become a concern. Here, since the geometry of the problem is fairly simple, let's make the refinement depth 4. Another property we need to define is the maximum number of refinement loops. This property enables you to change the number of refinement loops the application performs. The default is 1. This means within one iteration, it will try to refine the mesh only one time and report the results. In general, the procedure for adapt convergence starts from an initial solution of the model on the base mesh, and then the elements are queried for their solution information. If the elements results have a higher error, the element is placed in the queue to be refined. The application then continues to refine the mesh and perform additional solutions. Note that adaptivity will be more robust if your initial mesh is with tetrahedrons. Let's resolve the problem with current convergence settings. It will take more time to complete the solution because of the refinement 
and multiple solving times. Now the solution is done and on the convergence history another data point is added. From the table here we can see that with mesh refinement for one time the accuracy requirement is reached. The difference between the two results is about 1-3% which is lower than the 5% allowable change we specified. Click on the contour plot of total deformation results. We can see the mesh is indeed refined on the entire geometry. So we know the total deformation result is converged. But how about stress? Let's say we especially are interested in the stress results on the inner surface of the round hole. What we can do is to extract the stress results in this surface and insert convergence tool under it. Now rerun the problem. This time we notice significant local refinement around the area of the hole. With such a mesh both the maximum total deformation value over the entire body and the maximum stress on this surface reach the convergence requirement. In this way we can obtain a mesh independent solution, namely results that don't change appreciably even with mesh refinement. So this is basically how we perform adaptive convergence in ANSYS. Pretty neat, right? A couple of suggestions and comments I want to add to this point. In finite element analysis, if there's re-entrant corners or boundary conditions on a vertex, stress singularity may occur, causing artificially high stresses. With stress singularities, the maximum stress will not converge to a unique value but will keep increasing without limit as the mesh is refined. If the singularity is in a non-critical location that is not of interest to the analyst, we can use scoping tools to isolate the regions of interest far away from the singularity area. However, if the singularity is in a critical location, it needs to be addressed. One solution is to add a local feature, such as a fillet or an undercut, to remove geometric discontinuities at critical locations. This will not only address the non-convergence on local results, but if done correctly, it can lead to a more realistic representation of the physical design. Unlike stress, with deformation and other degree of freedom results, you will always get a converged result using the adaptive convergence tool, because singularities do not occur for deformations. In general, adaptive convergence is a good tool for verifying that the mesh you have is sufficient. It might not be a good idea, however, to always rely on this since it can be computationally expensive for complex models. Also, we should be aware that adaptive convergence is not a mesh control specification in the traditional sense, so it's not repeatable for a new model. Lastly, the accuracy of your simulation depends on many factors, the most important of which is how accurate your geometry material properties, loads and boundary conditions reflect the actual physical system. Adaptive convergence is a tool to help us understand the influence of mesh in the numerical accuracy, but it cannot compensate for incorrect input such as improper boundary conditions. We can use adaptive convergence as a learning tool to understand where local mesh controls are needed or verify if the current mesh is sufficient. This will help to define a better mesh for future models to ensure the numerical accuracy or mesh independence of our solution. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. To find more information about your other topics, check out our channel for more how-to videos and visit ansys.com courses today.